Welcome to another episode of Third and Three with Coach Roger Holmes. I'm Jason Holcomb, joined as always with the coach. Coach did exactly what we wanted to do. Got out there, got out to a good lead early, had a running clock second half, and a fireworks show at the end. I don't think you could ask for better. And a beautiful weather and, and great, uh, great crowd support Friday night. Jay, it was very important to us to, to get off to a good start. We went out defensively. I think they went three and out, maybe. They uh, got the football. We got it back two plays later. Xavier Bostic was in the end zone with about a 50-yard run. Uh, we scored in the kicking game with a punt return by Eli Hartwell. Uh, and we, didn't he get excited, boy? Oh, the whole yeah. team got stoked about him getting that touchdown. Yeah, and then uh, we had another touchdown pass to, uh, well, we call him Tukey Sears Tobich. Yep. Uh, and he, he's still smiling today after his. But uh, we were able to run the football, we were able to throw the football after looking at the film. Offensive line wise, we graded out pretty doggone well. We missed a couple of assignments, had a little bit of issue. Uh, on one particular concept that we've got to get better on. Defensively, uh, probably set a school record the other night. After, Negative nine yards is a nice well, night. Actually, when we went through the huddle film and, 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 and corrected a few things, it actually came out to minus 15 yards. Wow. Uh, total offense for Wilkinson County. So we played really well defensively. We scored a defensive touchdown. Yes. We had was that Malachi that got the fumble recovery? Uh, Malachi O'Neill uh, stripped a guy, went in and scored, so that was huge. Uh, we had a punt return for a touchdown. We executed a two-point conversion uh, off of a polecat formation for a score. Our kicking game was real sound eight and solid eight. the other night. And so at the end of the day, uh, it was a tremendous game one. Now, if we've got to continue to improve, right. but for game one, it was really good. Well, and the good thing is you've got this week to kind of look at everything deep and heavy, get ready for a, a really good game next week. But we'll talk about that in the future. Right now, let's talk about our Optum Player of the Week. Coach, you talked about Xavier right at the beginning, and, and he just brings it on both sides of the football. It, it's always full steam ahead, and when he busts through that middle and got that touchdown, you know, I think he did that during the scrimmage, too, where he just went pew. So yeah. I know seeing that, and then obviously what he brings on defense, you can't quantify. Talk about him. Well, he's our leader defensively as our Mike linebacker. You know, that's, that's really the quarterback of our defense. He's got to make a lot of checks and get people lined up in the right positions based on formations that we go against. Very intelligent football player. Uh, Jordan Tobridge has been out. Uh, he, he was our starting fullback. Mm -hmm. So he broke a bone in his hand, and he was able to play some the other night, played really well defensively. Got a couple of carries, ran the ball hard. Uh, while he was in there on offense, even with the big club on yes, his hand. Yes, he was a giant. But, uh, so Zay had to pull double duty. He was really going to be the starting middle linebacker and alternating at fullback and, and, and vice versa with uh, Jordan Tobridge. But, you know, we were able to play a lot of young men the other night in the first half. I thought my defensive coaches did a really good job of rolling guys in and out and keeping some people up front pretty fresh, especially in game one. Well, you couldn't ask for better, and I'm so thankful that somebody like Xavier is getting some shine because, you know, he's he's going to be out and about making plays, but a lot of times it's on the defensive side. So exactly. We, we're not able to always highlight because we a lot of times you score 64 points, you're going to be talking about an offense. But kudos to him, and thanks to, uh, to all our friends over at Optum for giving us the chance to highlight these players each and every week, and more importantly for the service they provide. I know, Coach, every week you, yep. you're leaning on Coach Melissa, especially in these hot summer days. Got to keep that pickle juice nearby. <laughs> no doubt about it, Jay. <laughs> well, Coach, this week we obviously are off, uh, and I love the way the schedule works out because it gives you a chance to kind of work out some kinks that you saw in game one. But we want to talk about some of the other football that's happening this week because we still have football happening here at Shamrock Bowl. First off, Wednesday, we're going to be having Swainsboro come into town to play our middle school to kick off their middle school season. And then the next day, we got them coming back for a JV football game. Talk about those games and how those games mean something to the varsity. 
Well, I, number one, I, I'm looking forward to seeing our middle school football team. Last year was sort of a rejuvenation. Uh, they got things back on track with Seth Watts and uh, Matthew Poe going down there. Now Matt Starley. Yes. Uh, it was a longtime varsity assistant is helping work with the defense on the middle school. Those guys have been working hard. They've, they've been competing all summer, been to a couple of half pad camp situations throughout the summer months. So I know they're excited, ready to get on the field. And, you know, that is without question, that's our future. So we want to see how they look. And then our JV kids, uh, They'll get, they'll get an opportunity to go out on the field on Thursday, and hopefully some of them can earn some Friday night playing time of what they're able to get done in the JV games. So I'd love to have some people out to support these young, uh, young Irish, and, and I think we will have, and it'll be wonderful to get them started. Now talk about the kickoff. Is it 5.30 for both? Or both games are at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Both games start at 5 wonderful. o'clock. That's kind of finishing up the heat of the day. Yes. It's all downhill from there normally. So uh, come on out and enjoy a couple of days of football here in the Shamrock Bowl. Yes, it is worth your time. And these young kids, they get after it and have a good time. And I love the energy. And you're not going to find uh, somebody on the sidelines with more energy than Coach Watts. I joker, he's, he's ready. And I'm surprised he don't have his guitar on his back to play a few notes for us whenever they're doing well. But you guys be sure to come out and see us. We want you guys not to forget about season tickets. They're still on sale. We have six home games left. So even if you missed the first one, you're still getting a killer deal if you go ahead and get those six season tickets exactly. bought. And just come by the board office, see Miss Pam Jones. She will get you took care of. Also, Touchdown Club can get you took care of as well. Yeah, the Touchdown Club's meeting now every Monday night at 6 o'clock. Had a full room last night. We're looking forward to adding some fresh faces to the room to come out and support these Irish. And one of the greatest supporters we've had pretty much day one has been Mr. Ron Pierce and, of course, his wife, Virginia. But we wanted to send out our love uh, to him and his family on the passing of Miss Virginia. I just want to say thank you to Mr. Ron and his family for all they do for the Irish. Well, they've been, they've been tremendous, tremendous, tremendous supporters. Uh, they are family to the Dublin Irish, and, and we're hurt by the loss of Miss Virginia, but we all know where she's headed, and, and the days will be better for her. Yep, there won't be 100-degree days where she's at. So yes, sir. Thank you to Mr. Ron and our prayers and blessings out to that family. And this has been 3rd and 3 with Coach Roger Holmes.